Hello, everybody, and welcome back to 15 Good Minutes. It's your guy, Coach B, and I'm here with the A-Team. Freddie, what's going on, buddy? How you doing good, sir. JR, what's up, man? All is good. All is good, man. Getting ready for this this last this last hoorah in basketball. Isn't that I, a I fact? Know. This is this is the this is our first annual Final Four episode because this is the weekend of the Final Four. You know, me personally, man, I think I've told you guys this before. I just think it's the greatest sports time of the year. Right up, right up from about that point of selection Sunday, especially the first weekend, and it's kind of weird, like. You get in the first week and you have so many games, you get to kind of pick what you want to watch. But I don't know if you guys know this last week, and I thought it was kind of dumb to run multiple games at the same time when you don't have as many to watch. Why they couldn't put one behind the other behind the other. But, you know, that's why they're CBS and we're 15 good minutes because. <laughs> if I think they probably did just to kind of appease the fan bases of the teams you know whether it be on tbs or tnt or cbs you know you can watch this game you can watch that game because new one now to the average you know fan you know yeah you want to watch all the games right. well, I, I, th- I think it has a lot to do with time time consumption what do you mean I think they have one after one after one you ne- they'd be, take a long time to get get done i got you no problem with that yes <laughs> <laughs> That goes oh, yeah, back to yeah, Freddie's no, point. No, I, I agree. But I see what I'm you're saying. You're saying from the network's perspective, though, right? Yeah, you don't from want the network's Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, I can, I can, I can agree with that. Um, this is uh, since this is the final weekend. You know, it's it's also known as you know the, the last four dancing. So at some point in this show, you might see a couple people here doing a little dance. There may be somebody you don't see dancing. You know, because we've been working on the gritty, and uh, if it's in there, you see it. You just see a couple of old cats getting it in because all three of us, all three of us have somebody in the final four. You can see with JR representing Villanova, me and Freddie been going back to UNC since, I don't know, man, the first championship day. So it, I think yeah. it's good that we're all there. I, I, I know what you're saying, JR, no gritty for you now. What, what what's up, yeah, man? man? I couldn't get it in. I couldn't get it in. You got time. <laughs> you got time. We tape on Tuesday. We don't release till Friday. Oh, okay. It's all okay. good. Well, in that you case, have a day. To help you out. So, so let's 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 jump right into it. Um, and and I'll open it up to you guys. Um, you know, you've got your final four is Villanova versus Kansas, UNC versus Duke. Jay, I'm going to start with you. Just your overall, you know, feelings on this year's final four. I, I think uh, I think the Duke UNC is going to be a classic battle. I, I think both fantastic programs. A lot of history. Uh, I mean, it, it's a to me, it's a toss up. I know Duke lost the last game, right? Mm-hmm. And how many times did they play this past season? Twice. Twice. And how many times did Duke? Duke is it one and one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is a rubber match. I don't know. You know, I'd like to say NC, but I think they're going to be playing for coach a little bit. Well, we'll you know, get to can- that point in terms of who you think is going to win. You know, a little bit later. Let me let me pop over to Freddie. Freddie, general comments on the Final Four this year. Um, what are your thoughts? I think Kansas and Villanova are very closely, uh, very uh, closely matched each yep. team, right? I think with Duke and UNC, I think it's going to be a blowout. Okay, all right. I think I, once we get to that, I think oh. I like where he's going. That's a great tease. Okay, so oh, you fans, <laughs> we're not fanboys. So um, let's let me let me start off with this. So with you, Jr. for for all four teams, give me one thing that each one has to do to win. I, I can tell you for for Villanova and Kansas, if can, Kansas City, I mean, if Kansas can keep the game sped up, I mean, running, they'll give Villanova a hard time. If Villanova can slow them down, and besides that, they've got an issue with uh, Justin, Justin Moore. You know, there there could be some problems, but don't count Villanova out. I mean, their their bench is not deep now. You know, because somebody's going to have to come up to to play for 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 more. But I would never count them out. You know, so Jay Jay will figure out something. And for Duke and Carolina, what do they have to do? Each one has to do to win. Well, I think that Duke has to, to play ball to win. 
because they've been on the downslide the last, I think, few games they had. I mean, they, they came in to play in the tournament. They were playing well. But before that, they weren't. And so they could be suspect against a good team. And North Carolina is a good team. You understand? So it's going. It's, I think it's going to be a gritty battle. And, and that's what it's going to have to be. You know, Hubert, Hubert is doing his thing this year. So fair enough. Freddie, what does each team have to do to uh, to have an opportunity uh, to win this year? I think Villanova and, and between Villanova and, and Kansas, I've seen them play a, a, a lot this year, but I, I don't really know the players, but I know how they play. I think, to be honest with you, both teams just have to continue to do what it is that they do. Like with Villanova. I watched them, and they, they got five guys that can give you double-digit points every night, and they defend, and they can give it to you however you want it. They can, they can play the half-court game. They can play they – can, they can push it as well as Kansas. And so those teams are, in my opinion, a little bit more evenly matched than Duke and Carolina, right? And so I think – Whoever with Kansas and Villanova, whoever does what they do the best, th- that it, they'll win. Carolina and Duke, I think Duke, the biggest thing for Duke is they just have to, it, this is a trap game for Duke in my opinion, right? You have the emotion of playing for a national championship, you know, potentially your coach's last game, on top of playing against UNC, right? So it's, it's a trap game for Duke, right? If you're UNC, you just got to find a way to stop two players. Uh, what, what is Rancho, Pancho, whatever his name is? I think it's Ocho. Pancaro. Pancaro and Williams. Stop those two guys and you beat them. That's it. Why did they, why did they, why would the NCAA ever put in college basketball Duke UNC, the greatest rivalry in college basketball. Why would you put them on the same side? I think the yeah. answer to that, though, is pretty simple. They've never met before. Never so, met. Right. right. So the probability was slim to none. I, I totally get exactly. that. You know, exactly. I get that. And I, and I would say, I think both of you guys really kind of hit it. I think for, for to, to Freddie's point, for Kansas to win, just be Kansas. For Villanova to, be, to, win, to win, JR, I think they're going to have to do a little bit more because more is out and they're not deep. So if they can, to your point, if they can slow them down and be in the game in the last five minutes, they have a shot. For Duke to win, they got to keep riding the, the emotion. I think Freddie's right. It's a trap for them in so many different ways. Just don't let the emotion tip your scale. There's an emotional element because they're kind of pissed that they lost the last regular season game to this particular team. They're right. also, to Freddie's point, in the Final Four, and also every single game is potentially Coach K's last game, and that brings all the media attention and all that stuff with it. But I think they can win if they can manage the emotion. Carolina, I think, I think, I think honestly, they're playing with house money. If they can just focus and play the game, you know, they're the, what are they, an eight seed, right, Freddie? So of, yeah. of all these other teams, you know, I do believe they've earned the right to be there, but don't do anything other than what you do. Because honestly, I think all four of these teams can win, which leads to my next question for you guys. Real simple for each team. Start with you, Freddie. Uh, who's each team's best player in your, in, your, in your opinion? The best player for UNC, Brady. I would say Brady Man. Um, for Duke, I would say, is it, is it Poncho? Poncho? Yeah. Um, Bancaro? Bancaro. Bancaro. Mm-hmm. Um, for for Kansas, I would say is it Braun? Brown, Braun. I think he was like sixth leading scorer in, in the nation this year. I would say him. And with Villanova, it, it's it's I don't I don't remember the young man's name. He's a white kid. He's a guard. Gillespie. I, I don't know his name, but Gillespie. Yeah, yes, Gillespie. Yes, yes. I would say him. All right, Jr. Your four best players. But for North Carolina and, and, and Duke, the same, it's the same people he said. Uh, I don't know a whole bunch. I'm not deep into uh, Kansas, but, uh, but Gillespie is my guy for, uh, for Villanova. Fair enough. Um, for, for me, I'm going to say with Kansas, to me, without a doubt, 
it's Abaji to me. I, I think he's a, a whole lot better than Brown. I think he was the, the conference player of the year, and he's just balling all out. I would give you Gillespie um, for Villanova. I think Amando is the best player um, on Carolina right now, and I would go with Banchero for, for Duke. So I'm going to swing it back to you, JR, without using any one of those of your your who you said was your best for. Give me one player on each team who can be a difference maker this weekend. Probably Abaji. He could, you know, uh, for for Villanova, it's going to well, it's going to be that guy that that's hurt. It's going to be more of it, you know. He's out though. Uh, somebody else is going to have to step up. Uh, I really don't. I can't really pick someone to, to to step up, but somebody's going to have to. I don't know who's going to be coming off the bench. And um, Carolina, Carolina, I, I I don't have anyone for Carolina. All right, Freddie, difference makers. You got any for Villanova? I would say Gillespie. Um, for Kansas, I would say Braun. For your Duke, difference makers can't be the same people you said was the be best a, player. So far, you're batting two for two. But, 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 but that, that, that's how. The, but for Duke, I would say Williams. Williams is the I, I love his energy. And then for UNC, RJ. The reason and the reason I phrase the question that way though is in theory, if your best, if you're saying that the best person is person whoever, then the other team will think the same thing. So mm-hmm. logically, what I'm looking for from you guys is if that best player gets shut down if Brady can't do what he does. So for me, for example, when I look at Kansas, I think Abaji is the best player, but I think Brown is the difference maker, right? When I look at Duke, I think Banchero is the best player, but I would probably go Roach over Williams because that little guard has been killing people. Williams, I think people will expect that. For for Carolina, I think I said Baycott for my guy, so I think RJ is the guy because I think with, with, with Manic, um, with Caleb, with everyone else, I think everybody knows what you're going to get. But if RJ is on, I don't think you can defend that many people. Um, and then for Villanova, I would say it's, it's Samuels is their other guy, you know, because everybody's going to be keying on on, on Gillespie. Um, so I think Samuels, if he has a big day, again, to JR's point, they're missing a starter at, at the worst time of the year on a team that isn't deep. So so for me, I would, I would give that to uh, uh, to Samuels. So um, the last thing I got for you guys on, on this one is basically, I know who wins Saturday and then who wins Monday. Freddie, I'll start with you. Saturday, I see Villanova because I think they're a better defensive team than Kansas. With UNC Duke, I think Duke pulls it out. I, I think Duke blows them out, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, and I hope – uh this is one of the times to where I would love for someone to say, Freddie, you were dead wrong. I'm hoping I'm wrong, but I, I think it's going to be Duke National Championship. I'm I, Because I hate Duke, I got to go with Villanova. Fair <laughs> enough. I got you. JR, who wins Saturday? Who wins Monday? I've got the same picks. Uh, I think that Villanova is going to play, play a close game. I don't think it's going to be like, you know, one of them 10-point joints. I think it's going to be a close game. But I think Villanova will pull it out. And and like Freddie said, I think Duke is going to take out North Carolina. And only because if they, if they didn't lose to them that last game, I would have felt differently. But I, I yeah. think they're going to come out with a different energy. I agree. Copy that. And then I'm, I'm going to go against both you guys, which is one of the reasons – that I'm going to be doing the gritty because I think Kansas is going to handle Villanova because of their depth in their shooting. One guy we did not mention was the timeliness that Remy Martin has come back into that lineup who was injured most of the year, and he's been doing really well. And when it comes to UNC and Duke, I'll say it for you, Freddie, we're going, we're going to beat them, and we're going to beat them handily. We're going to beat them <laughs> handily. That whole trap mentality that you talked about is 100% true, but more importantly, Nobody's giving them the respect that they should be here. This eight seed is going to win. I've got a Kansas-UNC matchup on Monday night, and UNC taking it all. Okay. Well, first of all, first of all, I did I, I think that no matter what their 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 ranking is, UNC is always in it. You understand? They're not a fraud. <laughs> Please don't bring that up. We don't got time for that conversation today. <laughs> But, but I, yeah, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it. 
I didn't. I'm like Freddie. If you guys go back to last week's episode, Freddie Freddie made a key point. He said he thought that the key to where Carolina is is the fact that they got by um, Baylor. He said when he did his three brackets, they didn't think it was going to happen. And the rest of us probably felt the same way. So you get them, you get UCLA. When I say we play with house money, you know, <laughs> I say yeah. we play with house money. So we will see. We will see um, who's, uh, you know, who's going to be right. So obviously I would think, you know, and you tell me what you think, Jerry. I think the, the obvious question of the week this week is who wins the natty. Before Monday, everybody gets a chance to weigh in. Who do they think will win the national title game? It's all Final Four and championship, baby. <laughs> so, again, folks, we really do, really do appreciate you guys. We know we went a couple minutes long, but this was really important. It is the NCAA Final Four weekend, championship weekend with my guys Freddie and JR. We hope that you guys continue to follow us on Twitter and on YouTube at 15 Good Minutes. Gentlemen, anything before we break? Go Hill. Have a good one. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the games. That's it. We out. Go Heels.